Hello, this is Jonathan Lampel with another uh, video tutorial, and in this video I'm going to be going over different types of file formats and why it matters. Now you may have seen them in the render properties or options here. Uh, under the output you have different you know, file formats that you can choose, JPEG, PNG, uh, even different animation um, formats and codecs, but what do they all mean and why should you use certain ones? For instance, what is color depth? What is I mean, I'm sure you know what black and white RGB and RGBA is. Um, if you don't, that's just, you know, black and white image, red, green, blue, or red, green, blue, and alpha. And compression is obviously the quality, but, you know, what's the color depth? What are the differences between all these? And why does it even matter? Because um, up until now, I ha really had no idea until I took a little bit of research and looked it up for myself. And while I don't necessarily know everything about it because it is quite complicated I'm going to do my best to explain it to you because when you're making uh, images and animations it really does um, play a significant role and something that you do need to know so I've got a little PowerPoint for you here so understanding file formats first of all what are file formats so what happens is when you render an image it's a raw image until you save it externally so when you have an image inside of blender Say, for instance, if I just rendered this cube here, this is a raw image. But as soon as I go to, say, F3 and save it out, then it becomes compressed. And so uh, we'll talk about compression in just a second and what that actually means. So each different file format is simply a different kind of compression, taking the image um, and making it so it's you know a feasible file size that computers can read quickly. So what's the difference between the two types of, or between the different kinds of compression? Well, there are two main types, lossy and lossless. Lossy means that um, it loses a lot of quality, but you have a smaller file size. So it can be read quickly, you can upload it uh, to the internet very, very fast, but it's not going to look as good. And lossless means that the image doesn't lose any quality, but it's going to have a little bit larger file size. Now, in addition, there's also two types of color palettes. And so there's indexed color which can only store a limited amount of colors, up to uh, 256. And direct color can store thousands and thousands of colors. So going in even to, into more depth about uh, colors, there's two different kinds. You remember in Blender here, we had 8 and 16 in the color depth. And that was referring to 8 and 16 bit. Now, we get 8 bit from the fact that we have our three uh, primary colors, green, blue, and red. And together, they can make uh, green, yellow, white, cyan, magenta, blue, and red. And if we remove all of them, we would have black. So that is our eight uh, main colors, and that gives us our eight bits. Now, uh, this next part is a little bit confusing, and I don't understand it all the way, but I'll explain it the best I, I can. Uh, so eight-bit uh, images can contain 256 shades of each color, and we get that because each color is uh, two to the power of x bits, so if we have 8 bits, it's 2 to the power of 8, which is 256. So that means that, you know, with 256 shades of green, blue, and red, we have about 16.8 million colors. And that's an insane amount of color, and the human eye can't even see that many. So if we, if that's how much uh, color 8-bit has, what is 16-bit? Well, I'm glad you asked, because 16-bit, uh, if you thought 16.8 million colors wasn't enough, 16-bit gives us 281 trillion possible colors. So if we can't even see 16.8 million colors, why do we need 281 trillion? Well, I found a really good example online from photoshopessentials.com, and it just kind of gives you an example of why 16-bit is so important over 8-bit. So you can see here that these two gradients are exactly the same. And if you, uh, in Photoshop, if you use the levels to kind of gray them out, you can see here that they're just kind of squishing the uh, blacks and the whites you know, together to make a very flat gray out of the entire image. And so they look exactly the same. But look what happens if you take them and you move them all the way back out again. There is now a huge difference between the 8-bit and the 16-bit. 16-bit, there is almost no difference from the original image, and 8-bit, you get this um, 
choppy, you know, cut up look. And that's because even though we can't see that many colors, the computer can handle that many colors. And so now we have a much better image. And so while you know, it might not make any difference for a final image. If we still have some editing to do, 16-bit is going to make a large amount of difference when we're doing our color correcting and different types of compositing. So uh, another example is just these two images here. You can see that there's lots of color, and one is 8-bit, one is 16-bit, and they look exactly the same. Now, again, uh, they're going to do the same thing where they kind of gray it out a little bit, and then they're going to take the levels and move them back out again and you can see that now there is quite a bit of difference between the two one of them um, has you know suffered some damages of quality and stuff like that and it just doesn't look as good as this so this 16-bit um, image has a lot more potential for um, editing and it just as you go through you know color correcting you can do quite a lot more with it without it looking um, you know kind of kind of trashy so that's one reason and there's even uh, a 32 bit which is you know if you can even imagine that many colors i definitely can't um but if you need to do some intense really like deep color correcting you can also use 32 bit but i don't think that's even available inside of blender because that's just insane so uh now you know why we need you know that many colors I'll go into the different file types. So there's different types of compression, and they all do slightly different things. And so the first one um, is BMP. Now this is a really old file type, and it's a lossless format, which means that you don't have any loss of quality, and it can use index or direct color. But the fact is, is the files are so large that it's pretty much useless. And I'll show you an example here. So I have these um, this poster that I made for a school project about Hamlet and I've saved that into different types of uh, file formats and you can see that each each picture is quite quite large is uh, what what are the dimensions it is 2550 by 3300 so it's a really big file and the BMP is 24 megabytes now look if I compare that to a JPEG JPEG is 2 megabytes and PNG is 9.12 megabytes. So you can see that really the difference between the BMP and the PNG is virtually nothing. Even between that and the um, JPEG here, there's literally no difference. So uh, that doesn't make any sense. And oh, I just closed that. Okay, desktop. Ooh, do 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 do. Um, where file formats? There we go. So I'll just open them side by side so I can actually compare them. Okay, there we go. So here is the BMP and the PNG. There is no visible difference, and you know it just absolutely killed the file size. I mean, it's almost twice as large as the PNG. So enough railing on that. Uh, basically, don't use the BMP. It's very old. Doesn't work that well. So the next one is GIF, and it's also a little bit older, and it's also lossless but indexed color only, and that means it can only use the you know 8-bit file, but it doesn't quite compress it very well. And so the important thing for this is that it can be animated, but um, it's good for logos and stuff, and it's not even available in Blender, but it's not very good at compression, and I'll show you what I mean. As I have a GIF. Um, image right here and you can see that it's it is fairly small it's just it's definitely smaller than the PNG and it's a little bit bigger than the JPEG but look what happens here's the JPEG you can see up in the top right corner there's you know I think the editing kind of scratches there were done in um, uh, GIMP by accident or Photoshop when I was editing it but look at the happens when I look at the GIF it has these awful like gradient lines and it just compressed very very badly so uh, when you're doing something like a photograph don't ever use a gif but if you're doing something like a simple line drawing uh, or a, a logo it's really really good because it has a small file size and it's um, not necessarily lossy but the colors um, definitely get squished and wrecked so if it's something simple 
it's great, but if it's something more complex, don't ever use it. Uh, next is a JPEG, so it's a lossy format with direct color, but the lossy in this is kind of interesting because it's designed to remove the information that the eye can't see anyway. So um, if you look at the difference between a, a JPEG and a PNG, again you can see there is no visible difference. So why is it so important? Well, it's like the 16 and the 8 bit. Uh, it's you know great for a finished product, but if you have to keep um, editing it, it's going to lose quality over time. And that's what this lossy format means, is the more times you compress it, the worse and worse it's going to look. So even though it can use it can use 32-bit uh, color, but it is a lossy format. So again, the more times you save it, the more quality is lost. So it's great for um, photos and stuff. And if you're finished editing, you can uh, export it to a JPEG, and it'll you know take the file size way down. So if you you know have to place it on a website or something, it's not going to take up as much space, and it's great for that. But if you're not done editing, don't use a JPEG. Uh, PNG is lossless, so you can you know keep editing it, and it's going to keep the same uh, amount of quality. And it was invented to replace the GIF, and it can be indexed or direct. But a huge plus for this is it can store gamma and alpha, uh, which means that you can have you know transparency, and it's a lot better for editing. So if you're not done editing a photo, use a PNG because it uh, stores a lot more data and a lot more you know color quality. So again, you can see that. It is a larger file size. It is 9.12 instead of 2 megabytes, but it stores a lot more data and it's going to help your picture look a lot better. So a few more. Uh, Open EXR is really, really cool. Uh, not a very common file that you'll see around on the internet or anything, but it's really great for compositing because it can store multiple render passes, and that's uh, very, very important inside of Blender. You can do some really cool things with Open EXR. I haven't played it around with it too much, but I know that um, that the different open movie projects and stuff all use OpenAXR and you can um, use it for you know compositing different render passes together and that's very very neat. So uh, it also has a very high dynamic range which means that um, you know if you uh, basically has more darks and more lights and maybe when I go into more color correcting I'll explain high dynamic range in more detail, but for now just know that it has a very high dynamic range. Uh, lastly we have Targa, which is an old file type that is uh, really really common um, and it's been around for quite a while and it's been mostly replaced by the PNG now, but it's uh, very popular in the game industry, but uh, as I said it's being replaced by the PNG. So what about video formats? So we talked about um, you know image compression, but what about videos? So there's different types, um, and I'm just going to go over the common ones here. So the MPEG is an older format intended for you know video streaming over the internet, but it can be very lossy. Um, you'll find it it can be very like pixelated and just doesn't look quite as quite as good as, as it as it should. So H.264 is pretty much um, the best option we have. It's a newer format similar to MPEG, but it can be twice as efficient in compression and it also has a much higher quality. So if it's twice as efficient and has higher quality, I would say stick with that one. Uh, Augthior also has uh, more quality than the MPEG, and it's you know more popular, but it's not as clear of a video as H.264. So, um, of course, each has their own strengths and weaknesses, but as a rule of thumb, I would use this one. So, uh, moving on, just the the rules of thumb overall for logos or line drawings, use a GIF. For you know simple things, for photographs, use a JPEG when you're done editing, so you can upload it um, faster and it can load faster on the internet. Uh, however, if it's an image with transparency or not done editing yet, use a PNG for images and uh, compositing. If you're not quite done with that, or you have you know multiple render passes, use OpenEXR because it's very very cool. And for animations, I would recommend using H.264. Um, and so that's all for. This simple tutorial hopefully it gives you a better understanding because I certainly didn't know any of this information uh, until I started researching it. And as soon as I export this um, tutorial, I'll be exporting it as an AVI because that's the only thing BB Flashback can export as, and that'll give me a large format. However, I can just import that into Blender and then 
export it again as an H.264, and that's going to automatically compress it, uh, make the video size much, much smaller, while I can upload it very fast to YouTube at a very high quality. So, um, that's just kind of a plug of how, how that kind of works. And um, I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.